One of the most affordable 5G ready smartphones that you can grab right now is this full view beast right here, the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G. Bit of a clunky name, sure, but don't let that or the affordable asking price deceive you. For just 500 quid here in the UK, you get premium specs across the board, dual lens, front facing and rear facing cameras, and a classy notch free display. Despite all this awesomeness, however, the Mi Mix 3 5G isn't quite the ideal handset for anyone hoping to jump on the ultra fast network and bandwagon without non stop angry calls from their bank manager. I've been using the Xiaomi Blower as my full time handset for the past week now, and here is my in depth review. And don't forget for more on the latest greatest mobile tech to pog subscribe and ding that notifications bell. Cheers! Now with its chunky ceramic frame, the Mi Mix 3 5G isn't just a bit of a handful. It feels like a solid hefty slab when it's stashed in your pants. The reason it's so thick is that slider style design. You can push down the screen to reveal the selfie camera squirreled away beneath. That's how the display can stretch from edge to edge without any notches or pinhole blots to speak of. That slider mechanism does feel a little bit stiff, certainly when you're first getting the hang of it. And the fact that you've got smooth surfaces all around as well means it can be a little bit tricky to find purchase and actually get it pushed out like so. So it doesn't feel like quite as well-rounded an option as something like a pop-up camera like you'll find on the OnePlus. Still, that ceramic finish is incredibly durable. Stick the Mi Mix 3 5G in a pocket with your keys or coins or whatever and Xiaomi's Beast will emerge unharmed, at least on that rear end. After a week of constant use and abuse, a couple of very light scratches have appeared on that display, but nothing too major and you can always get a screen protector if you like. And sadly, there's no water resistance here, so definitely don't go fumbling the Mi Mix 3 5G into the toilet or anything. I do quite like the neat and tidy finish of this handset, complete with that gold 5G logo, very bling. Of course, the shiny surface does attract finger grease and dust like a leftover donna attracts flies, so you'll constantly be buffing the thing to make it look nice again. It's almost quaint to see a proper physical fingerprint sensor housed around the back as well, rather than actually built into the display itself. And actually, I really like this design decision. Those optical sensors can be rather disagreeable at times, while the Mi Mix 3 5G's rear mounted scanner worked absolutely fine, provided my tips weren't too moist or anything. And while you do still get fierce recognition support here on the Mi Mix 3 5G as well, the fact that you have to fiddle around sliding the camera up means that it's not really worthwhile. That 6.39 inch Samsung manufactured AMOLED screen is a definite highlight here, especially helped along by its full view finish. As usual, you can play around with the color temperature and on the default settings, you get vivid hues that don't burst into sickly sweet territory. The Full HD Plus resolution means sharp blur-free visuals too, so the Mi Mix is definitely well suited to photo editing, dossing off with some YouTube, whatever you fancy. However, my review model did refuse to download Netflix from Google Play and wouldn't play the service in browser either, which was basically a big load of donkey d And on the audio front, there's no stereo output from the built-in speakers or 3.5mm audio jack either. Although that said, at least the Bluetooth connectivity works perfectly well, offering a strong parent even in crowded places. And sorry Xiaomi, I'm definitely still not a fan of that MIUI launcher which is slopped on top of Android Pie. This does add a whole heap of features, including an emergency SOS tool, lots of gesture support, and a very handy one-handed mode. See what I did there? But it also rips out some key Android tools, including the App Store, which is frankly unforgivable. I'm definitely more of a fan of OnePlus's Oxygen OS or the near stock Zen UI, which are cleaner and enjoy a more logical layout. I have seen the occasional little bit of quirky behavior from the Mi Mix 3 5G as well. So for instance, one time the selfie camera just simply refused to work. Every time I slid it out, just got an error message until I actually finally rebooted the device. That seemed to get it working again. And occasionally when I'm Skyping, I'll be thwarted by audio and camera issues then as well. However, I do have to say there is one bonus feature here that I really love, and that is the slider settings, which basically adds a funky sound effect every time you slide out that selfie camera. My favorite is definitely the warrior. You can even make it sound like a lighter. Oh yeah, that's the good stuff. But seriously, MIUI is still rubbish. Of course, other opinions are available. And if you're not a fan of MIUI, Xiaomi has at least made it very easy to change to a different launcher. You can check out my favorites that you can download from Google Play right now for a few ideas. I certainly have no complaints on the performance front as the Mi Mix 3 5G packs in Qualcomm's Snapdragon 855 platform, one of the most premium mobile chipsets around. Gaming is a gloriously smooth experience and everything else runs beautifully as well, even in split screen multitasking modes. And of course, that 5G support means super nippy internet shenanigans, whenever you hit a hotspot that is. 
In London, the coverage is still a bit patchy to say the least, but I managed these rather impressive results when I did find a bit of 5G love. Here's hoping the speed stays strong as more people make the jump to a 5G contract. I'm also more than happy with the battery life on this thing as well. You get a 3,800 milliamp battery stuffed inside, and I found that was more than enough to get through a really intensive day with plenty of media streaming, camera use, things like that. I never needed to touch those battery optimization tools, except for the purpose of actually demonstrating them here in this clip, of course. Well, the Quick Charge 4 Plus support means that you can power back up in a nippy fashion. And so now onto the camera tech, and around the back of the Mi Mix 3 5G, you'll find not a triple end setup like most rivals, but a simple 12 megapixel shooter with Sony's IMX363 sensor, backed by another 12 megapixel shooter for the likes of depth perception. That unfortunately means you don't get the same sort of flexibility as you do with some rivals. There's no ultra wide angle or telephoto option to get a very different viewpoint. Xiaomi has definitely kept things rather basic. Oh, I say that Xiaomi has kept things basic. Actually, the Mi Mix 3 5G's camera app is absolutely packed full of features. It is super dense, and I'm guessing that most consumers will just completely ignore everything apart from the standard auto mode, so I'm not really sure why they even bother. With or without that now obligatory AI mode activated, I was impressed by the color capture in my test photos. Even incredibly rich hues were cleanly grabbed, and vivid scenes come out with a natural vibe. Activate the HDR mode and you can expect respectable results in high contrast situations as well, such as shooting a subject against a bright summery sky. As you can see, plenty of detail and no obnoxious oversaturation. Low light results of that auto mode are a lot less impressive, but you do at least have a night mode to switch to for those nighttime situations and the results are a bit brighter and cleaner using that. And there are tons of other bonus features to play with as well, including a passable portrait mode with typically terrible studio lighting effects. And if you want a bit more control, there's always a pro mode as well with full manual levels. As for video, you can shoot up to 4K resolution footage at a hyper-realistic 60 frames per second. My test footage was crisp and punchy at that top level, and the image stabilization didn't suck too hard either, so that's a bonus. And now onto the Selfie Snapper, a 24 megapixel lens with Sony IMX576 sensor, this time backed by a basic 2 megapixel depth sensor. Now you might think that having the selfie camera hidden away behind the screen like that would help to protect it from dust and grime and things like that, but if anything it makes it worse, somehow it seems to infiltrate into that gap, so you'll have to make sure you give that top section a good old wipe before you snap your gorgeous mug, otherwise the results will come out all blurry and grainy and horrible. That said, at least popping out that selfie camera does automatically activate the camera app, which is a nice little time saver. This front facing setup did seem to really struggle whenever there was strong lighting involved, but otherwise it worked as expected. And yes, there's full portrait mode support as well, so you can get some fake bokeh action on the go. And you can shoot up to full HD resolution video using those front facing cameras as well, lovely stuff. And so, after a full week of using the Xiaomi Mi Mix 3 5G as my personal handset, would I recommend it to you fine people? Well, the software is definitely flawed, and while that slightly design does make for a full view experience, it is also a little bit clunky and inconvenient at times. However, that said, if you are committed to jumping on 5G as quickly as possible, and you absolutely can't stretch to the OnePlus Rest 10 alternatives, this is definitely an impressively affordable alternative with some nice premium hardware. So that's my own personal thoughts on the Mi Mix 3 5G. What are you thinking? Are you tempted by it? Definitely be great to hear what you think down below in the comments. And please do pop subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest mobile tech. Cheers, everyone. Love you.